A little bit about the large Russian drone and missile strike that occurred in Ukraine yesterday. Um, overnight reports have come through of what appears to be perhaps the largest um, missile and drone strike launched by the Russians against Ukraine thus far in the Russian special military uh, um, uh, operation against Ukraine. There were numerous reports of explosions uh, throughout Ukraine last night. Um, many of these have now been corroborated by a video um, being released on social media. Um, video showing uh, destruction of buildings, video showing destruction of uh, rail lines at um, train junctions, um, reportedly areas where troops and equipment for the Ukraine offensive were being offloaded. Um, there's some further detail around the earthquake that was reported in Kiev which has been claimed to have been up to 3.4 on the Richter scale and perhaps up to 100 tonnes um, TNT explosive force equivalent. Um, that some reports are indicating that given the nature of Ukraine, which has many, many miles of underground bunkers and underground storage facilities, that a either incompetence or error um, in one of these sites, or possibly a Russian missile, um, bunker-busting missile, made it into one of these. One of these um, underground ammunition depots had been identified and located by the Russians and was destroyed um, by a missile strike. There, on social media, there is video of people showing footage of their um, lights in their living room swaying around due to the, the, the explosion. Um, also in the reports overnight, some interesting, some telltale signs perhaps indicating what may be happening in terms of the status of the Ukrainian air defence systems. Um, reports from Ukrainian social media sources of swarms of drones. These are the these are the um, uh, the Iranians originally Iranian supplied Geranium twos or the Shahid one hundred and thirty six drones. Um, Swarms of these, uh, them traveling um, in different directions to one another, of them circling around. And this is leading to speculation that Russia has evolved the design of these uh, drones. It's taking the original Shade 136, may have evolved them by putting larger um, engines into them, allowing them to travel further, uh, being capable of carrying larger warheads, and perhaps most importantly, um, reports that they have now improved the control ability such that the drones are now controllable during their flight. Hence the reports of them perhaps circling and loitering. Uh, previously they were pre-programmed with a destination and that was unable to be modified once they were launched. Now reports are that the Russian, um, the Russian GPS system, the GLONASS system, is now believed to be involved. And by using this satellite information, the drones are now able to be controlled once they have been launched, uh, are allowed to loiter in the air until a suitable target is, um, is identified and then set upon that target. Um, also, there's reports of them flying very low um, and this is indicating that perhaps the Ukrainian air defense systems are struggling or have perhaps um, used up their missiles and are perhaps um, becoming exhausted. Um, there is, um, with this, the, the GLONASS system, which is being used to, well, allegedly being used to now direct these drones, um, there are some other pieces of information um, indicating this could be the case. Um, there has been over the last, where are we? Over the last few months, um, some uh, satellite launches in Russia since October of 2022. There have been about five now satellite launches. These are believed to be satellites that would be useful or used in the Ukraine conflict, and. 
Just this week, Russia has launched its first all-weather satellite. And so this is a satellite which will be positioned so as to be able to take photographs of the Ukrainian um, battlefield at any time, day or night, during any sort of weather conditions, able to peer through clouds and smoke and that sort of thing to get um, imaging. Um, in terms of in terms of some of the strikes that have been reported overnight in Ukraine, um, there is footage uh, around Dnipro Petrovesk where the, there is um, damage done to railway uh, lines, um, exchange points for trains. Um, and at Kmelnitsky Airport, there are reports coming out that the airport was struck there and that up to five Ukrainian fighter bombers, five Su-24s were destroyed. Um, importantly, these Su-24s were apparently kitted out with the British Storm Shadow missiles. So this report it does appear to be confirmed from the uh, Kmelnetsky Regional State Administration Telegram channel where they do discuss that there was an attack and that five of the aircraft were destroyed uh, and the runway itself was damaged and the repairs are, are starting there. Um, this is this is a significant significant attack. If this has occurred, if these planes have been destroyed, um, given the given the fact that there are now numerous Russian reports that the Storm Shadow, um, the British supplied cruise missiles, are being repeatedly shot down, now we see an example of a number of them. Uh, not even making it off the ground and being disabled along with the fighter bomber aircraft which would have launched them which is a significant loss to the Ukrainian Air Force. Also from uh, uh, Dnipropetrovsk, Dnipropetrovsk claims of a strike upon a hospital uh, that there appears to be yes very good footage that there has been Russian severe strikes against a hospital um, the Ukrainian um, social media has been um, making this widely publicized that a hospital has been struck. Um, however, there have there has also been um, released um, screenshots of a Ukrainian blogger who was announcing prior to the attack that the hospital has been um, requisitioned by the by the army and is used as a staging facility to house Ukrainian troops preparing for the offensive. So while it's difficult to corroborate, it does this does appear valid, the, uh, the post from the Ukrainian blogger, and which may indicate that yes, while it is a hospital building that has been struck, that the building itself may not have been being used to treat patients and instead was being used to house uh, soldiers preparing for the Ukrainian offensive. Um, there's um, also information, some additional information about the uh, claims that a US Patriot air defense system was destroyed on the 16th of May, just a couple of days ago, a week and a half ago. Um, initial reports came out that the Russians had fired six Kinjal missiles and the Ukrainians claimed that they were all shot down. And the Russians then counterclaimed that they destroyed a Patriot system. The Ukrainians denied this. And then footage came out which appeared to show uh, what could well have been um, missiles being fired from a Patriot system in Kiev. And then return fire of what could quite apparently have been two Kinjal missiles, two explosions shown coming from the area of where the Patriot missiles had previously been launched from. Um, this was denied by the Ukrainians. However, shortly after, the US military announced that, yes, a Patriot system had been um, that struck, but damaged was the term. Um, there are now some before and after satellite pictures that seem to indicate that um, perhaps there was, uh, perhaps there was, yes, here we go, uh, a, a, an attack and a strike on the Patriot system. At the airport in the Zuliani airfield, uh, prior to the announcement that 
the, the Ukraine had received a Patriot missile system. Uh, there are aerial photographs of this area of the airfield and these, um, these provisions for equipment were not in place there. Um, this photo here from the 15th of May and this from the 18th. On the 18th, there do seem to be um, areas, these two areas here, indicating strikes of missiles of some sort. So a Patriot missile system is comprised of a number of units, command and control units, um, radar units, radar control unit, and then a number of launchers for Pac-3 and Pac-2 type of missiles, so after eight, launch, eight launches. So the Russians were claiming that they had destroyed a radar unit and six, uh, five, sorry, of the launchers. Who knows from here? It appears that quite possibly two units may have received direct strikes, and who knows as to what damage may have occurred to other closely related um, pieces of the Patriot system. Um, over, so this this footage, so these um, satellite photos have been released now, and do appear to indicate that there were missile strikes there. Um, there are reports last night, uncorroborated ones at this stage, that a second Patriot missile system may have been attacked and damaged last last night. So more information will likely come out about that in the next few days. Um, pardon me. Um, <clears throat> um, so while the, um, the last night has been a very bad night for Kiev and other areas, um, within Ukraine. This map here shows areas where missile strikes were reported last night. So we can see up around Kiev here, but they're also far into the, the west of Ukraine. Um, however, um, the Ukrainian army has also been lifting up the level of artillery that they have been firing um, and sending to the front line. This makes sense and aligns with the with the um, speculation that the Ukrainian offensive may be starting soon. There are a number of reports from Ukrainian sources indicating that the offensive will start within the next two weeks. Um, so this this increase in the amount of artillery sent on the front line, uh, the increase in the number of um, incursions over the Russian line, uh, even into areas of Russia, such as in Belgorod last week, this is to be expected as the Ukrainians begin to probe the line, look for weaknesses. Um, there are also um, increased reports of the use of the British Storm Shadow cruise missiles. Um, with claimed, with Ukrainian claimed reports of strikes against Russian targets. Um, however, there's been very little to reporting to corroborate uh, some of the grander claims by the Ukrainian Air Force. Um, examples where they're claiming a storm shadow missile struck a building and killed 250 plus Russian soldiers. Um, there's been no comment at all about this from the Russians and there doesn't seem to be anything appearing in Russian telegram or social media channels to um, confirm that that has happened. But, but as, um, as we say, these sort of things, the uplift in Russian uh, activity, the uplift in Ukrainian activity is expected. Russia, if it knows the Ukrainian offensive is on the way, will be doing what they can to get in behind with their missiles and drones behind the Ukrainian lines to identify where the stockpiles for ammunition are, where the staging areas are for material and for soldiers, and have, that will be their guiding points for where they are um, launching their missile attacks. And this is what we're seeing in the reports coming through from, from last night. Um, one concerning item of news which is coming out, there seems to be increased Ukrainian reports indicating that um, Russian forces are planning to damage the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. Now at present the Russians hold the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant and have for some months there have been multiple reports over the last few months of sporadic shelling around the Zaporozhye nuclear plant, shelling initiated by Ukrainian uh, forces. 
The Russians currently have 5,000 troops located around the plant with about 1,000 troops or slightly under in the plant itself provide, providing security and 20,000 additional troops in the surrounding area. So while it um, seems unlikely that the Russians would wish to damage or blow up the nuclear power plant at this stage, given where it is, it's held within Russian controlled land, it makes sense that they would want to retain that and keep that for the future. However, it's, yeah, there, there certainly are reports and there certainly seems to be a history of Ukrainians um, shelling the area around the, um, the plant. There are also Russian reports, again, difficult to corroborate these, but Russian reports and video on social media of a group of saboteurs, Ukrainian affiliate, affiliated saboteurs captured um, near the Zaporozhye plant with allegedly um, schematics and blueprints and what looks like shoulder mounted anti tank or anti aircraft um, weapons to be used to, to cause damage at the plant. Whether this is true or not, I can't say. I'm not on the ground. Um, but interesting and hopefully something that won't come to fruition given the nuclear, um, the risk of a severe, uh, well, a catastrophe if a damage was to be made to that plant. Um, just a, a little bit on the, the uh, ever, well, the new, the new topic of the F-16s being um, provided to Ukraine. General Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, um, has indicated that s small numbers of F-16s will not be a game changer for Ukraine. And a number of veteran retired American pilots have now commented that um, they do not believe that the F-16s will be game changers and that they will be susceptible to Russian missiles. The F-16 um, missile range and uh, radar capabilities um, are believed to be insufficient compared to the Russian air defense systems, their missile range and their far stronger radar capabilities. So some of these veteran pilots are reported as saying that they would expect that if they were flying F-16s in Ukraine that they would get an alert, that they were being tracked and they would need to abandon their mission well before they were close enough to be able to launch their missiles successfully and that they would dive to the ground and hope to get a mountain between them and the uh, air defence system before they were shot out of the sky. So um, there are reports of Ukrainians asking that they need 48, that 48 F-16s would allow them to defeat the Russians. However, is, I, there just doesn't seem to be that that evidence that even if they did receive them in that number, that they would actually have a dramatic effect on the on the outcome of the upcoming offensive, given what seems to be a strengthening Russian air defence system along the battle line and behind the uh, the battlefront, um, in combined with a, a weakening. Uh, air defense system for the Ukrainians. Um, the, some of the some of the pilots speaking about what would happen are suggesting that if the F-16s were sent to Ukraine, they would be used purely in defensive roles um, around the likes of Kiev, where they would attempt to patch holes in the air defense system by launching air-to-air -air missiles, attempting to take out Russian cruise missiles. Um, just a little bit of a recap on um, the Battle of Bakhmut. Um, in Prigozhin, Evgeny Prigozhin has released the stats that they have collected their war stats of Ukrainian losses during the battle for Bakhmut, and the numbers are, are, are staggering. If they are, if they are correct, and if they are to be believed. Of course, there may be inflation of these numbers that that happens, but even so, even if a hefty percentage of these were to be um, exaggerations, still the numbers are large. And perhaps the most concerning of, of all of them is the manpower figure where Prigozhin is claiming that 70, 72,000 Ukrainian soldiers were killed during the battle for Bakhmut. Now, this is, these, are, these are losses. Now, these may not all be killed, these 72,000. That does seem very high. It may be that this is a number for killed and those um, 
wounded badly enough to be taken out of um, the battle. However, it would seem difficult for a Prigozhin to know those numbers and that the numbers that they may know would be ones verifiable by bodies that they were able to count. So reg regardless of the numbers, it's a horrible number, it's a terrible number for Ukraine if it's anywhere near that in terms of, of losses in, in, in the loss of defending Bakhmut. Um, one final thing here, just a little bit of a talk about um, this. I've got to give thanks to um, thanks to. Well, I'll just try and get the name right. Um, Simplicius the Thinker. Simplicius the Thinker has an amazing sub substack. Um, I'll put a link to it into the description below. If you haven't read and subscribed to Simplicius the Thinker, do that. Um, he she produces an amazing amount, collates an amazing amount of information about the Ukraine, about the Ukraine war. Um, and one of the points that um, Simplicius, Simplicius has discussed is some of the evolving uh, tactics of the Russian forces. And um, two of these I thought were interesting. Um, one is the use of small groups. Of soldiers to travel out front um, to draw Ukrainian fire um, with the goal of making the Ukrainians reveal their location then supported by the by the strength of Russian artillery the Russians are then able to pour heavy artillery onto those locations um, and the Ukrainians who have been running under um, what's believed to be limitations in artillery shells and seem to have been firing far fewer shells than the Russians don't seem to be able to replicate this to the same extent given the limitations they have on coming following up on the second part of the tactic which is to be able to pour heavy heavy artillery onto the revealed position so this is something which this tactic seems to be one that's been having a successful um, outcome for the, for the Russians another one is the concept of uh, Crumple zones, which is where the Russians seem to be um, inserting troops into sparsely defended, perhaps low value, flat, difficult to defend territory. And so the Russians are inserting soldiers into there and not to try to hold these areas, but to have these soldiers and these forces there so as to slow and impede or retard the advance of the Ukrainian forces when they do begin to make the offensive. And so, again, the, the approach here is to have a few small number of men out in these low-value areas, creating a buffer zone or a crumple zone between the Ukrainian forces and the Russian forces, such that when the Ukrainian forces do commence an assault, the, the Russian forces can fall back, and the plan is that they suffer very small numbers of losses, yet they can then be overshot by Russian artillery onto the positions of the advancing Ukrainians. So um, just an, an interesting point given the large amount of commentary that was coming out about the, um, the, the, the simplicity of, of Russian tactics on the front line and of the um, the human wave attacks, which were claimed by the Ukrainians, which just don't seem to be the case at all. All right, that's it for today. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you like this, share it around. Um, and if you're interested, check out my other channel, The Third Party Show. Uh, there should be up here somewhere a link to one of those videos. Go and check that one out too. Thank you.